So let me repeat that. My name is Manav, student ID 20301056027, and I'm going to be presenting slide 4 of the Human Genome from iLab. So this is my table of contents, and I've placed a table right below my webcam to follow through with my presentation. So this is the slide that I have chosen. It's the section from the human jejunum, and this is the tissue. The two tissues I'll be identifying today. The first one will be simple columnar epithelium, and the second one will be the loose connective tissue. Now let's look at the overview of the stomach, duodenum, and the jejunum. So as food enters from the stomach into the duodenum, it enters the jejunum, which is exactly here. And this is where I'll be examining the tissue slide from. Now let's talk about the walls of the jejunum. The jejunum has four walls. The first wall is the serosa, which is the red arrow, then the muscularis external, which is the yellow arrow, the submucosa, which is the green arrow, and the mucosa, which is the blue arrow. Now let's look at tissue one identification. So if you zoom into the mucosa into one villi, you will see this section. So there are two tissues here. There's one tissue here, and there's another tissue here. First, let's look at this tissue, where it's the outermost layer of the villi. So there are three cells that can be identified in this tissue and for cell one we're going to be looking at these elongated cells. So for the features of these cells, they are closely packed cells with very little extracellular metrics. They appear taller than they are wide. The cells, they touch the basement membrane. This is the basement membrane right here. They have elongated nucleus which is located near the base of the cell and they have this very dark pink stained striated border and the observations fits the description of columnar epithelial cells now let's look at cell two which which are these cells that we're going to be looking at now now the features of these cells are that they're scattered among the columnar cells and they have these flattened nucleus right here located at the basal part of the cell the observation fits the description of goblet cells now let's look at cell three these are the third cells that we're going to be looking at the features of these cells are that they are small round nucleus present within the epithelium and their cytoplasm is not clearly visible. So this obviously fits the description of migrating lymphocytes. So for tissue one, we have identified three cells. The first cell was the columnar epithelial cells, which are mainly used for absorption of nutrients of food, digested food. The second cells are goblet cells, which are for secretion of mucus. And the third cells are migrating lymphocytes for defense and immune purposes. So this is obviously the simple columnar epithelium. So tissue one is simple columnar epithelium. Now, let's look at tissue 2 identification. So, we already looked at this particular section of the villi in the mucosa. We already saw that this was simple columnar epithelium. Now, let's look at this tissue right here. There are many cells in this tissue, but we are going to be examining three cells and one non-cellular component. So, for the first cell, I'll be looking at that. So, for the features of this cell is that it's large and ovoid with purplish cytoplasm. Its nucleus is eccentrically located with a radio or cartwheel or clock face pattern. And the observation fits the description of plasma cells. Let's look at cell 2. I'll be talking about that cell. The features of this cell is that it's spherically shaped, its nucleus is segmented and biloped, and it has many granules present in it. And the observation fits the description of eosinophiles. Now, let's look at cell 3. So for this cell, we can see that it's spindle-shaped, it has a large and oval nucleus, and is surrounded by fibers. This fits a description of fibroblasts. Now, let's look at a non-cellular component of this tissue. We could see that there is a thick bundle of fibers, and they run in random directions. And along with this thick bundle of fibers, we could see that there's extensive amount of extracellular matrix, and this fits the description of collagen fibers. So for this tissue, we have identified three cells and one non-cellular component. The first two cells were plasma cells and eosinophiles. They are mainly used for defense purposes. And the third cell was fibroblasts, where they produce extracellular matrix and collagen fibers. And the non-cellular component was collagen fibers and the extensive extracellular matrix. And these all fit the description of loose connective tissue. So tissue two is loose connective tissue. Now, to summarize my presentation, we have looked at the mucosa of the geogenome. We have identified that the tissue 1 was simple columnar epithelium because of the presence of columnar epithelial cells, goblet cells, and migrating lymphocytes. And for tissue 2, we have identified it as loose connective tissue because of the plasma cells, fibroblasts, eosinophiles, collagen fibers, and the extensive presence of extracellular matrix. 
Thank you for listening to my presentation. Have a great day.